The exact moment it was clear WWE had lost faith in a wrestler. Number 10, Kofi Kingston getting squashed by Brock Lesnar. For the most part, Kofi Kingston's 2019 WWE title reign was enjoyable, yet how WWE booked the reign to end overshadowed every positive thing about it. WWE would book Kingston to collide with Brock Lesnar for the WWE title on the 20th anniversary of SmackDown, and whilst it was a given that Lesnar would win the WWE title, fans hoped that Kingston would be presented as credible and legitimate. However, WWE booked the popular star to lose in just 7 seconds. Kingston would be hit with 1F5 and the match would be over. Fans were rightly furious with WWE as it was a spit in the face towards the fans that had invested in Kingston's reign, and to say that the squash was an insult to Kingston would be an understatement. From this point onwards, it was evident that WWE had lost complete and utter faith in Kingston being a main event level attraction. This squash derailed Kingston's aura and legitimacy, and if this wasn't bad enough, WWE decided to debut Cain Velasquez after Lesnar's victory, meaning that they wanted fans to know that Kingston no longer mattered at all. Whilst this booking move was terrible, it thankfully failed to impact Kingston's popularity, as even after the Lesnar match, Kingston remained incredibly over with the fans, and this was an organic, genuine connection that even WWE couldn't negatively influence. Number 9, Taz, 10 seconds in the Rumble. When Taz debuted at the 2000 Royal Rumble, it looked like, on the surface at least, that WWE were going to make Taz a big time player in the company. Unfortunately for Taz and his fan base, a few weeks into his WWE run, it was apparent that WWE had already lost interest in featuring Taz in a meaningful role, and Taz's role was dramatically reduced on TV. He was booked to face Big Boss Man at the No Way Out pay per view in 2000, and logic would indicate that this would be another easy victory for Taz. However, in a bizarre booking move, they booked Taz to win via DQ. The match would last just a matter of seconds before Prince Albert interfered, and instead of booking Taz to overcome the two heels, Taz was laid out and the excitement evaporated out of the arena, as he knew that they were watching some atrocious booking unfold before their very eyes. Following this match, Taz would then be relegated to the Hardcore Division, and within a few short weeks, Taz would be booked to lose to Crash Holly on SmackDown, disintegrating any hope that Taz could bounce back. But things got even worse for Taz when they booked him in the Royal Rumble for only 10 seconds, being eliminated by Kane with zero offense. This was only just a year later. Number 8, D'Lo Brown replaced by Drew Carey. During the Attitude Era, D'Lo Brown was one of the most popular stars of the respective era. D'Lo had a ton of potential in the ring, yet when newer wrestlers such as Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho surfaced in WWE, they out of nowhere began to lessen D'Lo's role. By the time 2001 arrived, D'Lo was involved in an infamous tag team with Chaz known as Lowdown. This was a truly terrible tag team that didn't do either talent any favors. At the 2001 Royal Rumble, Lowdown had won a tag team match on Sunday Night Heat before the annual Rumble match, which secured their place in the matchup. However, in a backstage segment, Vince McMahon just informed the duo that had been replaced in the match by a non-wrestler, Drew Carey. This was unfortunately WWE's way of directly telling the audience that these two names, particularly the former Intercontinental Champion and European Champion, no longer mattered at all. Number 7, Scott Steiner, WrestleMania 19 Absence. Upon signing with WWE in late 2002, they went right to work in pushing Scott Steiner to the top of the card. Steiner would enter into a program with world champion Triple H, and on paper, this feud could have been compelling, yet when the bell rang, everything fell apart. The two had zero chemistry in the ring, and their matches at the 2003 Royal Rumble and 2003 No Way Out pay-per-view were two of the worst matches of both of their respective careers. Steiner was suffering from drop foot, which did add some reasoning as to why his in-ring work was so poor, and the matches were so abysmal that the fans began to audibly turn on everything Steiner did. They were so disappointed with what Steiner was delivering in the ring that they cancelled any plans to feature him as a primary name on Raw, and he was subsequently removed from any creative plans from WrestleMania 19. For the rest of his WWE run between 2003 to 2004, Steiner would be presented in the mid-card, which was a far cry from his presentation during the final days of his time in WCW. Number 6, Mabel moved down the card. In 1995, WWE began to make Mabel the top heel in the company. He'd win the 95 King of the Ring and would go on to challenge Diesel for the WWE title at that year's SummerSlam. Mabel's performance in the match was an indicator that he wasn't main event material, and he was so reckless with Diesel in the match that Vince McMahon had to be talked out of firing him on the spot. 
Although Mabel wasn't fired by McMahon, McMahon would show just how little faith he had in him by booking him on an extended losing streak. The losing streak highlighted to fans that Mabel was no longer a world title contender and that he wasn't something that they needed to invest their time into. Number 5. Dolph Ziggler 2013 World Title Loss Adolf Ziggler was on top of the world following WrestleMania 29. Ziggler had successfully cashed in on the Money in the Bank briefcase on the Raw after WrestleMania and fans were firmly expecting Ziggler to finally get the world title run that he deserved. Unfortunately, when Ziggler suffered a concussion on SmackDown, it gave WWE justification to completely give up on the show-off. It was widely reported that Vince McMahon in particular didn't quite see Ziggler as world champion material, and Ziggler suffering the concussion gave McMahon the power to have Ziggler drop the world title without it looking like a personal booking move. Ziggler would defend his world title against former champion Alberto Del Rio at the payback event, and the match would be heavily built around Ziggler's real-life injury, and although the double turn in the match was expertly done, it sadly resulted in Ziggler dropping the title. Following the payback event, Ziggler's presentation drastically altered, and despite him still being over with the audience, it was evident that WWE had given up on presenting him as a top-tier superstar. Ziggler went from being in world title matches on pay-per-view to losing to Fandango on the pre-show within a few months. In the 2013 world title reign of Ziggler, is often labelled as one of the biggest missed opportunities of the PG era. Number 4. DDP Pinned by Sarah even though it was considered a daring move to debut DDP in WWE as a heel and give him the gimmick of a stalker, there was still hope that WWE would realize that he was an incredibly gifted performer. Unfortunately, his feud with The Undertaker completely butchered his credibility, and petty backstage politics influenced how DDP was being presented during the Invasion storyline. On one edition of Raw, they booked The Undertaker's wife Sarah to pin DDP. He was a former WCW World Champion, and to see a non-wrestler pin the once credible star was enough to determine that they were doing everything they could to embarrass and humiliate DDP. Number 3. Lord Tensai Losing to Tyson Kidd when Matt Bloom first returned to WWE using the Lord Tensai persona, they had intentions to make Tensai a top heel in the company. The problem was that fans remembered Tensai's prior work as Albert and A-Train, so they hijacked all his matches with Chance referencing his former persona. For a few months after his 2012 return, they ignored these chants and the disconnect from the crowd and he would be booked to pin major names including John Cena. However, it was in the summer of 2012 when it became obvious that WWE had lost faith in Tensai. Out of nowhere, he would lose to Tyson Kidd on Raw, and although Kidd was a phenomenal wrestler, he wasn't a main event star in the summer of 2012, so this was labelled as a massive upset. And following the shock loss, Tensai would be relegated to lower mid-card feuds and would become a prominent fixture on WWE Superstars. Number 2. Jinder Mahal, Royal Rumble 2018 the fans were under the impression that when Jinder Mahal dropped the WWE title in late 2017, they would simply move on and Mahal would transition back into the lower mid card. It therefore came as a big surprise when Mahal main evented the Clash of the Champions pay-per-view against AJ Styles and the match was arguably one of Mahal's greatest matches. However, whilst early on it looked like Mahal was going to stick around in the main event picture, the 2018 Rumble was the key indicator that signaled that Mahal's time as a main event player was officially done. He was eliminated in a comedic spot with Kofi Kingston and The New Day, and Mahal looked incredibly incompetent during the spot, and it certainly didn't help that The New Day would proceed to throw pancakes at the former WWE Champion. But in WWE's defense, they did try to push Mahal as a mid-carder, and even won the US title at WrestleMania 34. However, this creative direction was short-lived and Mahal has been up and down the card over the past seven years, and it's highly unlikely that he'll ever win WWE's top prize ever again. And number one, Austin Theory, Money in the Bank Cash-In. Vince McMahon had hand-picked Austin Theory to be one of the future players in WWE. Yet when McMahon took a step back from WWE, this left Theory and his character in a state of flux. Whilst the new head of WWE creative Triple H was a fan of Theory, it became based on Theory's presentation on TV that the game didn't believe Theory was world champion material. When he cashed in his Money in the Bank briefcase, he would bizarrely cash in on US champion Seth Rollins and he lost. Cashing in on the mid-card title is detrimental enough, but then to lose the match raises instant alarm bells. Following this loss, Theory would be booked as a regular fixture on TV and he would even secure a monumental victory over John Cena at WrestleMania 39. However, this victory was never followed up on and Theory achieved nothing of note following what should have been the biggest win of his entire career. 
In the months that followed his victory over Cena, Theory would join forces with Grayson Waller and Theory finds himself in a heel tag team which is a stark contrast to what McMahon intended Theory's WWE trajectory to be. But there you have it folks, 10 exact moments it was clear WWE had lost faith in a wrestler. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.